well, I guess for some uh, connection cut off. But what I was getting into next was the juices I got in the mail here recently. So I got a watermelon charged and it's a watermelon lemonade. Pretty good juice. And then I got the Pan Am, like I just showed y'all what I got in my uh uh axial and then i got the juiced which is a strawberry hibiscus green tea and then i got two lemon bars some good stuff <sighs> all more time hopefully the internet doesn't cut off again but what i got in next was some clown coils these are the tri-fuse clapton's it's a 30 it's a uh three wrap and it's the uh, 20, 26 gauge by 38 gauge Nichrome 80. Some really banging coils. Badass. Love them. Down for that. Also, I got some Mint Me by Mr. Clown himself. It's a mint chocolate chip cookie. I was really loving this. I was rocking it for a day. I didn't want to use too much of it because I want to let it steep a little bit more. And then I'm going to really get to using this but really good. Another one I got that I still haven't even cracked the seal on yet is the Rectem Balls. Let's see if you can pick that up. Rectum Balls. Some good stuff. It's Key Lime Pie. Something I've really been liking here lately. Something that's really been uh, catching my eye. And one of the ones that he has sent me over, and I'm really re ready to try that. Next, where I got in was the Revenant Cartel, like y'all can see I had right here. And another one I got in was the Unicorn Ink and the Mass Mods uh, RDA in the Axial. Been really loving this. Got those clown coils in there. Been really doing well. But, been loving some of the new vape mail I've been getting in. Next the thing I got coming in, I believe, is a... Uh, I got the... Rage mod coming in, I got from Overdrip, and then I got the uh, OG, was it the OG Rebel from Grim Green and them. I have that coming in also. I got that from another from another fellow Stooge. So can't wait to get those in. Can't wait to try those. I've always wanted one of the uh, mm -hmm. Recoil Rebels, but just never really put the money out there to get one. So it's finally coming my way vape a little bit and then we'll get on to the advocacy stuff but first what i've been having going on this week while everyone was over there at the uh while everyone was over at mve so i uh went out there and i had to my daughter had her first t-ball practice which was pretty cool got to help her out on that and now we get to help out a lot but we got some other stuff going on i had a lot of vape mail come in and then uh Got to do a live stream with Frank Wolf, who is in the chat right now. Shout out to Frank Wolf over there at Wolf Bite. Got to do a live stream with him. It was pretty cool, pretty fun. So I figured, why not, why not me try a live stream out? So um, what else did I do this weekend? I ate a whole lot. We just got back from eating crawfish, and then we had some Mexican food this weekend. Had Texas Roadhouse. Ate too much this weekend, pretty much. That's pretty much my weekend. Everyone is over there at MV having fun, getting to meet all the good people like Grim Green and Vape and Bogan. I saw Grim and uh, Bogan, they were going to do a beer tasting together. It's pretty cool. Some pretty cool stuff that y'all could probably be looking out for. Um, but yeah, so advocacy stuff I wanted to get into. Um, and the main things I wanted to get into is stuff that I've already talked about in the past, but stuff that I want to more elaborate on and stuff I really want to show or tell people how I feel about it. Um, one of them was the uh, 21 law. The I know Texas is going through. There's a bunch of states going through, and there's a bunch of states actually fighting it. And there's a bunch of counties in states that are fighting it, and there's a bunch of counties in states that are going more towards it before the state is getting uh, trying to pass a law for it. So what do I really think about that? Um, my big opinion on that is I really don't think that the 21 law will work for vaping products. It probably will work because it's harder to, uh, it's harder to get it out there to, uh, vapors. It's harder for vapors to go out there and actually buy it and everything. But for smokers and kids that are using tobacco and kids that are using dip and stuff like that, I think it'll be, 
not too much harder for them to be able to go buy cigarettes or dip or anything like that, any tobacco products. I mean, hell, you see kids out there going and buying, getting people to buy them alcohol so they can go out to parties at the age of 16, 17, 18. So, I mean, tobacco isn't that hard for a kid to get. All they got to do is know a friend, know someone who's working inside of the uh, store or anything like that. And you can get it. That's what, that's honestly what I used to do. I used to know the person who used to work at the store. So I would go in there and I'd say, Hey man, just give me this. And he would give it to me. I'd pay for it. And then I was on my way, act like nothing happened didn't get my ID checked or anything like that. But for the vape community, I think it's gonna be harder because you have people in there who are working more towards there is most likely not a whole bunch of kids working in there is what I'm trying to say. It's more people in there actually, Let's see what I'm trying to say. There's more people in there that are actually working, and this is their actual job. So, I mean, whenever you're working at a convenience store and you're a kid, you're not really worried about money too much because you live with your parents still. You're still in high school or you're just starting college, stuff like that. But whenever you're working at a vape shop, usually it's a little bit older people, people like my age, and then they're actually going out there and they're doing stuff like that. They're not really going to let someone buy without checking their ID. Like my local vape shop, even all the newcomers and all the uh, regulars, they usually get their IDs checked. So, I mean, that's just pretty much what I think about it. But I don't think that this is going to really work too well just because they're still going to be able to get it no matter who you are. I mean, you have parents out there who don't really care sometimes. You have friends, you have family, like your brother that might be 18, you might be 15, and you see him start smoking a cigarette, so you're like, hey, I want to smoke a cigarette, and he'll start eventually buying it for you and stuff like that. But it's just all who's looking out for you and everything. Let's see what Frank said. Yeah, and like he said, it's not really, I mean, it's a three-year delay, but I mean, I think that it should be it, – it, we shouldn't have to worry about a kid or they're pretty much an adult. If you can get tried as an adult or you can go to the Army or Air Force or any of our uh, armed services, if you can go to those and they'll give you a gun and train you how to kill someone, I don't believe that actually going – in or uh, being 18 and buying cigarettes and 21 buying cigarettes is not much different. If you can get tried as an adult and you can commit a crime and get put in prison and everything for life and stuff like that at the age of 18, then there's not really too big of a, there's not really too big of a thing right there. But the, but 21, I think is kind of an outrageous law to be doing because then we're, we're limiting the kids to, or not the kids, we're limiting teenagers, 18, 20, 21. We're limiting them to not be able to buy a vapor product, which is 95% healthier for you. Or I think there was another study done that said it was like 97 or 98% healthier for you than tobacco, cigarettes. Uh, so, I mean, we're telling, we're pretty much telling them, okay, you can't get a tobacco product or you can't get a vape product. But then we all know they're still going to be able to get get their hands on a tobacco product or like a jewel or something like that. Just because jewels are so small and compact, you're not going to see uh, right now. I mean, you're not going to see a 17 year old kid or a 16 year old kid walk around with something like this or even something like this or a mech tube or anything. You're going to see them walking around with a little pod system, if anything, something real small, compact that'll fit in your pocket, and it won't be showing or anything like that. So I mean, you're going to have. Um, kids out there who are going to be walking around with stuff like that more than an actual big mod. So, I mean, it's more compact. It's easier to hide. And that's honestly why I'm trying to get away from pod systems. I like to usually give most of mine away because I think it would help out a whole lot of other people. So I think it would help. I think that they're more for the people who are trying to transition from smoking traditional cigarettes to actual, um, to actual uh, vaping and everything. Yeah, and it, uh, it's it's not uh, Derek. It's not also. It's going to be tobacco and vaping products. So what they're going to do is they're going to be putting vaping in the same. Uh, how would you say? Is they're going to be putting vaping and tobacco in the same exact category. So if you go buy a tobacco product like a cigarette, a can of dip, or anything like that, or a a vape product. They're not going to be separate no more. They're going to be together in one category. So a pack of cigarettes and this is going to be considered the exact same thing. So, I mean, like I said, I don't, I honestly don't think it's really going to hurt the teens on trying to get 
tobacco products, but the only thing I really think it's going to hurt them on is trying to pick up a vape product, which, I mean, honestly, if you're a teenager, which you shouldn't be vaping, you shouldn't be smoking, but if you are, for some reason, vaping or smoking, I honestly would say vaping is way better, even if you're 16, 17, but I, don't, I still do not think that you should be vaping at that age, so let's just not vape at that age, but what I think is that if if they did have a choice, it should be that way to where they can choose once they are 18. So I, I like that. I like that the law is 18 and everything, but whenever you get to buying cigarettes and smoking cigarettes when you're 12, 13, 14, 15, that's wherever I believe that parents should be able to step in and say something or parents should be knowing what their kid's doing more. I mean, hell, I, I used to dip for a while and my mom had no clue what I was doing, but I mean, there was, there was times where she kind of figured stuff out and she talked to me about it and stuff like that. But, I mean, there's parents out there who really don't care, and I think parents should be paying more attention to their kids more than anything instead of actually just letting it all go. So that's what I really think about Tobacco 21 and how I don't really think it's going to work out for actual tobacco stuff. And, I mean, honestly, I don't think that tobacco and vaping should be put in the same category either because it's just – it's not the same thing. It's complete opposites. I, they both do put out a cloud of smoke or vapor or whatever you want to call it, but it, it, they're not the same. I mean, like there's no secondhand, um, there's no secondhand things that are going to come out of vaping. You can blow this around a kid, which you should not do, which just do not do that at all. Don't blow a big cloud in a kid's face, but they won't get any of this of the nicotine or there's no cancer or anything like that that's found in a vape product. So, I mean, there's no secondhand effects on vaping like there is on tobacco. So, um, so next I want to talk about is the uh, laws on the taxes. And I, I'm honestly really against these taxes. Uh, I talked about, I think, my last video or the video before that. But there was one video where I was talking about it and... Um, that's pretty much all I talked about, but I'm really against the taxes. I, I know there was one in Texas not that long ago, and what they were trying to do is they were taxing, I think, like 1% or 10% or something like that. was something that wasn't really big, and it would have made like 10 cents more a bottle, a, a 60 mil bottle of juice or something like that. And what they were doing that for is because they went through all the p places they already taxed, the police department did, and they were seeing, okay, who else can we tax so that way we can get a little bit more money funded to us so that way we can get more training. And the training that they were trying to get was um, how to deal with special needs circumstances. So a kid with uh, special needs, instead of thinking they're on drugs, they would actually, they were getting training to know if they were on, if they had special needs or if they were on drugs or all these other things and how to deal with those circumstances. Cause a kid actually got shot for having special needs and they didn't know. They just thought he was on drugs or something like that. And he was going crazy and about to hurt them. But it came, came to find out that it was actually just a kid who had special needs. So, I mean, stuff like that, I'm, perfectly fine with but whenever you start pulling 90 percent tax increase on actual vape products i think that's just outrageous i mean there's no need for that and a lot of the stuff that they said it was going for was education to children on vape on how vaping and smoking was bad for you yes for a child vaping is bad for you but we should be telling the truth to our teens our kids my daughter, she's five years old. She knows do not touch any of my stuff. Do not touch any of daddy's stuff. Don't come in this room. Don't mess with any of it. She doesn't even, if, I, if I'm if i over there on laying on the bed and there's one next to the bed, I ask her, hey, can you hand it to me? She still won't even hand it to me. But the whole thing is you need, it's pretty much just like guns. You need to let your kids know what they are and what they can do and why you have them. Same thing with uh, vaping. Let your kids know, okay, yes, I do vape. And the reason I do this is so that way I can live longer because it's a 95% healthier for you. But this is this is not a toy. This is something you should not touch. This is something you should not play with. Most kids, small kids, will understand it and they will go on about it and they won't touch it or anything like that. But teenagers, yeah, they'll come by and they'll say, okay, yeah, whatever, and they'll try to be they'll try to rebel against it. So, um, but anyway, like I was saying, is uh, I just really think that the kids should be told more about it and i think that the general public of the u.s should be told more about it like we have countries like new zealand we have 
countries over there in the UK and stuff like that that are really embracing vaping and they're really saying that okay vaping is something that's really good and most places is places where they're paying for their health care places like Canada and stuff like that they're pay their your health care is getting paid for to live over there as a citizen so the things I think is the U.S. doesn't pay for our health care or anything like that they don't pay for any of that so they think okay well yeah we can just keep hurting them after we hurt them they have they get cancer from smoking cigarettes so pretty much it's like they're lighting our cigarettes for us and then after we get cancer or something like that, then we have to pay Big Pharma and all of them the money to get cured and everything and uh, to uh, like go through chemo and all that. And all of our medical bills go through that. So, I mean, it's they're pretty much making money no matter what. They're making money off of this. So, I mean, I think the U.S. should still, even if they're making money off of this big tobacco, big pharma and all that, yada, yada, I think that they should still be putting the truth out there for all the people in the U S public, not just so that way they can say, okay, yeah, vaping is good for you, but no, they should tell the actual benefits of it and how it does help people and how it does keep people safer, live longer, and how it's 95% healthier for you. I think that, the, that the U S should do that as a government. It shouldn't be, Hey, let's kind of, let's try to hide this or let's try to beat around the bush and tell everyone that it's bad for you or all oh, look, look at the people who've died from them blowing up. I think vaping is accounted for maybe two, three deaths total since vaping's been around. But yet, look at how many people in the United States die each year. Just in the United States alone, 400,000 people, I believe, is uh, just the U.S. or it might be worldwide. But 400,000 people dying each year just from smoking, just from smoking related deaths. And that could be like a house caught, catching on fire, getting cancer from smoking, um, dying of a lung disease, a bunch of things like that. And that's what I don't understand is why the U.S. still wants to say vaping is bad for you whenever you have 400,000 people dying each year, which I, I think it equals out to a hundred and two or no, a thousand, two hundred people dying each day just from tobacco products, which is crazy. I mean, there's so much that we could tell the gut or we could tell the government could tell the people and the scientists could tell the people instead of the government going up to them or people going up to scientists and telling them, Hey, find out something bad about vaping, uh, burn, burn it down to where the wicks have no juice on them. And then, uh, let's, uh, let's, let's do some tests there. Let's see what, let's see what kind of chemicals they get put in their body. No, they should be saying, they should be doing real legit tests saying, okay, let's put juice on, a wick let's vape it a couple times let's see what it does to the body and let's keep doing it but whenever you do it like that or you uh kind of fudge your testing and everything or you give uh, a lab rat 100 milligrams of nicotine which is some outrageous amount which no one i know who can ever vape i mean hell even salt uh, the highest they come in is 50. i mean it's just why beat around the bush and lie to the people of your country and say vaping is bad for you, and say vaping is just as bad as cigarettes, but yet there's so many other countries that have embraced vaping and said, okay, by 2025, we're having a smoke-free country. I think that's something that the U.S. should do, but, I mean, that's just me. But uh, let's see what else someone said. Uh, Derek, that, Derek, that's for buying mods, that's for buying juice, that's for buying anything. It's uh, any, any kind of vape product, even like a, a drip tip will be considered um, in the tobacco products. Uh, an RDA, wicks, coils, everything. Everything that the government can actually put in there. I mean, hell, even if you say these are... Uh, if you go out in there and you say, okay, well, these are vaping tweezers. These are meant just for vaping. Let's see what else. This Allen wrench is meant just for vaping. This will all be put in the same thing, which I, I don't think that they they might not do it to that extent, but I know like probably a drip tip, they might do a tank. Uh, I mean, there's a, I think it's Maine. They're trying to do it to where any container that, that can hold nicotine is going to be uh, against the law to have. So even like... Uh, uh, a tank or anything this this can contain nicotine 
this can hold uh, a little bit of nicotine in it. So it's against the law. So, uh, pod systems, they hold nicotine. There's no other way around it. There's no other way to be able to uh, vape on this without the actual pod in there. So, I mean, they're going to say it, it contains nicotine. It's a container that can actually hold nicotine, so it's going to be on there. I'm, I'm pretty sure they'll have it to wear an RDA also, even though you drip juice on there. So, like, even a bottle of juice, this can hold nicotine. This is going to be outlawed. I, I said any kind of nicotine container, which was absolutely crazy to hear, but that's what they said that was going to be out or is going to be uh, against the law to have in your possession. But I mean, then you also have other countries who have it a little bit worse, like Australia, where they can't even purchase juices with nicotine in them. And then you have uh, places, I can't remember where it is, it's somewhere over there in the UK, I believe, where you have to buy a bottle of juice and then you get a short fill, which would be, I think if you get like a big bottle of juice like this, you'd get a short fill like this. And they would fill the juice all the way up with the flavoring and the PG and BG. And then what you do is you actually put the short fill in there. And this is just a nicotine shot pretty much. And you would have to squeeze it in there. I believe they can always sell those by the 10 mil. So you'd have to buy a bottle of, I can't remember what they said. I think it was 18 milligrams of, an 18 milligram nicotine inside of a 10 mil bottle. And you'd have to put that in a 60 mil, which would make it a 3 milligram. So you'd have to have two of the 10 mil bottles for a 120 to make it a three milligram. So, I mean, it's, there's some countries that have it a little bit different. And then uh, like here in the U S sometimes like uh, if you get st uh, juices from vape barn, I believe it is, you can get a juice that has the nicotine PG and VG, but then you can get a short fill of the flavoring and then you can put the flavoring in there because they're, I mean, I'm not too sure if that's what the U.S. is going to eventually all go to because they're trying to f ban all these flavors. So, I mean, I, I heard someone the other day talking about it. What they said is they're going to – what they're going to start doing if they do ban flavors is they are going to sell you a bottle of PG, VG, and nicotine. And then after they sell you that, they're going to give you a free bottle of flavoring and they can they can call it something else I mean, someone called it something outrageous and they're like oh well i'm gonna call it this and then they, they'll just leave us alone but they'll still be going after it no matter what so i mean there's so many laws out there right now that are going on and it's kind of like it's really hard for everyone to keep up to date i know that the uh angela garrity and all of them over there at vape news magazine they do a really good job of trying to get out as much information as possible so please go look them up if you are watching this or even if you don't watch this, try to spread the word about Vape News Magazine. Go subscribe to them. First of all, you get a free magazine bi-monthly. So every other month, you will get a magazine for free with a bunch of vaping stuff in there. And it will show you a bunch of different companies, a bunch of different mods that are coming out, juice lines and everything like that. And some articles over some people that did a lot of good stuff for advocacy. And just some people that are on YouTube that have done real well. And they usually do an article about them. And then there's, uh, I believe you can actually pay to get um, a page out of the magazine or a quarter page, a whole page, front page, back page. You could, you could pay to actually get something advertised on there. But really go do check them out because they have a bunch of good information and they try to keep up to date as much as possible. They get updated more than once a day most times. I went on there earlier and they had uh, a, uh, a report on there about India, how they are... Uh, trying not to let jewels come into their country because of all the bad stuff that the U S or that they've heard about in the U S and everything. So what they did is they they're trying to ban jewels from their country. And that was about five hours ago. And I think they had another report come up today too. So, I mean, there's tons of reports that get put up on there. Also make sure you go subscribe and uh, sign up for Safada and uh, Kasa.org. Both of those are really great. They do a lot of calls to action. They try to keep up to date as much as possible, but there's not too many people actually working for them that are making a lot of money off of this. So there's not uh, there's not a whole lot that they can do besides try to put out as much information as possible, but they do miss a couple of things here and there because, I mean, they are human. They can't get to every little thing.
But yeah, so I mean, if, if anyone has any questions, go ahead and put them down in the comments and I'll uh, try to answer them. I'll try to help you out on them as much as possible. Um, but yeah, so I mean, there, there's a bunch, like I said, there's a bunch of laws going around and everyone's trying to do their part. And I've said this in pretty much this video is going to be a, a lot of stuff I've talked about in the past, but I'm just going to elaborate more on it and tell you how I feel more like, uh, the one I'm about to talk about right now is uh, mainly what Sean, I, I saw a post that Sean Typhon did, the angry hippie. Go check him out if you already haven't. He's a really good guy, does some really good juice reviews. And, I mean, y'all probably seen my juice reviews, but he does some really good juice reviews of, like, he'll take this juice and he'll run it on a parallel mod. He'll run it series. He'll run it in a sub-ohm tank. He'll run it in a bunch of different setups to see what it vapes in. And I mean, his juice reviews are legit and they are really good. And he gives you the best information you can get out of him. He doesn't do it and he doesn't do it and try to speed through it real quick just to get uh, content out there. He he takes his time on it. He's let he's tried juices as soon as he gets them. He's tried to let them steep for six weeks and then he tries a whole bunch of different stuff. So I mean, there's a bunch of good stuff out there that he's doing with his juice reviews, and y'all should really check him out. Uh. Yeah, uh, Bob. Uh, yeah, you can actually get put in jail in Thailand for vaping. Yet yeah, cigarettes are cheaper and are legal. Um, don't make sense to me. Doesn't make sense to me either. I mean, have you? Uh, I don't know if uh, if y'all saw my last one. I think or is the one before it. But um, I can't remember. Oh, it was New Zealand. What they are doing is they're doing a tax. Like I said, how the U.S. is doing tax increases on vaping. And like uh, New York, I think they just had a bill passed. It passed one of the parts. It still has one more part to pass, I believe. And it's uh, a 90 something percent tax increase on vaping. So you go in somewhere, uh, say this, this is your Orion Q. You can buy this online for $20. Say it, you go up to a vape store, it's $20, 20, say, we'll say it's 25. So you go buy this for 25, but with the tax increase on it would make this $50. So just for the store to make money on it, they would have to increase it by a, a, pretty much another 100%. Because, I mean, you're not going to find these in a vape shop for $25. So, I mean, say, say the vape shop is selling for 50 because they wanted to make 100% increase on it. So they'd make 25, but they pay 25 for it, right? But with the new law in effect, they would have to charge $75 for this just to be able to still make their 25 that they paid for it, their 25 back for profit, plus the 25 for the tax. So, I mean, crazy right there. And um, what I was getting to is uh, New Zealand, what they actually are actually doing is they are doing taxes on... Um, Derek, uh, for Texas, it's September 1st is whenever they're doing some uh, law passing and everything, but there's laws going in effect constantly day to day there's new ones coming up all the time i mean there's a bunch of laws coming out each day and there's a bunch of laws that are, they're actually doing day by day or they're bringing up like the flavor ban the big nationwide flavor ban i think it's hr 293 or something like that that one has still been in the works and it's been for about two or three months no i think it's about about two months but uh, like I was saying is uh, New Zealand, what they're doing is they are doing a tax increase on tobacco products. So what they said, uh, how much cigarettes can cost is anywhere from 20 to $25 for one pack. So they said vaping was probably about $60 cheaper per week or per month. I can't remember if it was per week or per month, but they said it was $60 cheaper to vape per week or per month. So, I mean, you're saving a lot of money right there, but what they're doing is to move to a smoke-free or, or tobacco-free, smoke-free country is what they are doing is they are doing uh, tax increases on tobacco products, not vaping products. What the U.S. is doing is they're putting tax increases on vaping products and not tobacco products because they want vaping products to pretty much, they, they want to try to put as much tax increases on it so that way they can get it banned and if they can't pass all these laws to get them banned, what they're going to do is they're going to put all these taxes on them to where no one really wants to go buy them. It's going to tear down all the local brick and mortar stores because 
No one's going to want to go inside a brick and mortar store and pay $75 for an Orion cube, which you can go pay $25 on online. So, I mean, what they're doing is they're trying to tear down all the brick and mortar stores, but then also they're putting tax increases on all of the um, online sales. There's a bunch of states that are actually already doing that. What they're doing is they're going to be putting tax increases on the online sales. So that way, whenever you get an online sale, it's going to, your prices are going to get jacked up also, which is going to tear down that too. So pretty much what they're going to leave it to is the people who do, do DIY, who people who make their own mods, people who make their own juices. But the real reason why I wanted to become an advocate and I really wanted to express what I feel about all this is because it's not about the people who know how to make them. Yeah, if you know how to make juice, like I know the local guy at our vape shop, I'm pretty sure he would teach me how to make juice if all this got uh, banned and it all got, uh, it was all legal and everything. I'm pretty sure he would help me know, uh, teach me how to make juices. But the thing is, is I don't want it to get to that point. That's why I try to do as much as I can possible to try to save it now because it's not really about the vapors who are out there now who know how to DIY or people who know who make mods or anything like that. Like you got the people out there like the Warlocks mods. You have people like Michelle Lynn who makes her own mods. You have all those people out there who make their own mods, but it's not about that. It's about the people who will want to vape later on in life because there's so many people out there who are still smoking tobacco cigarettes and everything and then later on in life they might want to have the same opportunities that we had i remember whenever i first started vaping you could walk into a vape shop and derek right here in the chat can agree with me and he was probably the first person who went to the local vape shop with me you can walk into that vape shop and you can go in there and you can uh you can go in there and say hey I want to try this. I want to try your key lime, fly, key lime pie flavor. And you could actually get a little bottle of it, drip it on your coils, or I don't think they really had drippers back then, but you could, uh, they would drip it on something for you or a little sub ohm tank or the little uh, tanks that used to come with the egos and everything. You used to actually be able to g grab one of those, put it on your mod or put it on a tester mod that they had and taste it and try it. Nowadays, you can't even do that. Like I remember back then, you could be able to sell back an old mod. If I didn't like this mod, I could sell it back to my vapor shop and they could uh, sell it as a used mod. Can't do that no more. Yeah, cardo tanks. Yeah, cardo tanks were real, man. They, those are some cool things. I remember having the big uh, 20 or 15 mils, whatever they were. Huge cardo tanks, custom made, man. They were awesome. But like I was saying, uh, you used to be able to walk into stores like that and just do that. And now you can't even, you can't even try flavors. And then they're trying to put even more and more laws in effect, which is just crazy. But they're trying to ban all of it away from everyone. And even in Australia, you can't even buy juice and uh, a setup at the same store. They have to be sold at separate stores. And you can't even walk in there and pick out what you want by looking at it or touching it or anything. They have to pretty much, it's pretty much a blank wall. I mean, I guess you could decorate your wall, but you can't have pictures up. All you can have is a little sign saying, okay, well, uh, Vandy Vape, Pulse Duel. Uh, mod and that's it you want to be able to see this you want to be able to see the box or anything like that like this wouldn't be in the display shelf or anything all it would be is a little sign that says okay well this mod is uh say a hundred dollars it's not gonna have actually have this mod where you could see it and you could tell what it is it's crazy so i mean there's so much laws that are going around now uh yeah and once they start taxing nicotine and once they start uh, taxing like all the uh, flavors and everything, it's going to be harder for the DIYers to get. Yeah, and I mean, DIY is a good way to slowly get off of nicotine because, I mean, it's uh, it's kind of hard to buy juices online because, I mean, I, there's only maybe three companies I know of that will actually sell you juices at the actual uh actual rates that you wanted. I, I know I can go into my local vapor store, but I mean, the, their prices are a little high on their house juices. So, I mean, a hundred mil gets up there in price and everything, but I mean, you can go in there and you can get a hundred mil and you can tell them, okay, I want uh three nicotine. Then the next time you go in there, okay, I want uh two and a half and then two and then one and a half, one percent, and then uh half a thing of nicotine. And then I eventually go down to zero. I mean, you could do that at stores, but uh, DIYing is actually a really good way to help yourself 
get off of nicotine because you can slowly go down at your own pace instead of going to a vapor shop and spending a good amount of money on a bottle of juice. And I mean, you can't order really any juices under three besides zero. So, I mean, unless you bought two bottles and did three and zero, mixed them. But I mean, by then, if you're buying $20 a bottle for juice, you're spending $40 right there just for two bottles of juice that you might want to go down nicotine before you get done with the second bottle. So, I mean, there's a bunch of things that can help you get off of nicotine. And that's why I'm really ready for this uh, You Don't Know Nicotine movie to come or the uh, documentary to come out. I'm really ready for that to come out so that way a lot more people could see what nicotine actually is. He's going, uh, Aaron Biebert, he's going around, he's really doing a good thing for the community and he's, uh, he had his Kickstarter up and he, he's not even a vapor or anything like that. Yeah, willpower, I mean, honestly, that it's, will help you kick uh, smoking cigarettes and everything also. But anyway, like I was saying, Aaron Bieber, he's doing something great. He's not even a vapor. He's not even a smoker or anything like that. I don't think he's ever vaped or anything. But he know he sees the struggle that we're going through, and this is something that he also believes in, that he believes that will actually help people. And, uh, yeah, nicotine is just like caffeine. It's pretty much the same thing. I mean, they're, bro they're both really addictive. I, I mean, I, I didn't really smoke much, but I chewed a whole lot, but this – it honestly helped me get off of uh, chewing tobacco and everything and it's, it's worked great ever since and whenever I stopped vaping I started getting back towards tobacco for like two three weeks I was like man I, you know what let me call up my buddy let me get a setup from him real quick before and then I'll go buy one because I really need to get off of tobacco because I mean it, it's it, it just tears you down and I mean it's my mouth started hurting real bad uh, whenever I did smoke, I was getting sick all the time. I, my throat was always getting clogged up and I was always congested. I had bad allergies anyway, but smoking never helped. Um, but where was I at? Uh, the, oh yeah, Aaron Bieber and the You Don't Know Nicotine. I'm really ready for that documentary to come out because I really want more people in the U.S. and around the world to see what is actually going on with this because... Nicotine is not the suspect on this. Everyone's saying, oh, well, nicotine's what, what kills you. Nicotine's what uh, really is getting all these kids uh, all hyped up. No, it's, be it's being rebellious is what's getting these kids all hyped up about vaping and smoking and all that. But smoking and vaping is not the same. Vaping is completely different. It's 95% healthier for you than smoking. Smoking has a bunch of chemicals, and it's a combustible tobacco that you are lighting up with a cigarette and you were smoking through paper or a type of paper and it's completely different and i mean i just can't wait for this video to come out so that way people more people can understand what nicotine actually is and how all the effects are because i mean he's getting actual scientist data and he's talking to a bunch of scientists about this and seeing okay well how uh how is all this going to actually do different what, what what does nicotine do, do to a, a young person's developing brain? What does nicotine do to an adult? What does nicotine do to an elder person? And he's he's getting all these good facts out there and putting a documentary about it. For someone who's not even vaping or smoking or anything like that, that's amazing for him to be able to go out there and help out the community like that. Let's see what they're saying. Yeah, Derek, I mean, I told you the other day, whenever you came by to get your old setup back, man, kick, kick it to the curb. Yeah, vaping saves lives. Um, also, if no one has gone out there and actually done the uh, why I vape video, I really encourage you to put it out there. Put it out there on uh, any of your social medias. Put, uh, it doesn't matter what it is, Facebook, Twitter, or anything like that. Put it out there on there so that way people can actually – look at it and tag all the politicians, all your representatives in your state, your county, um, anyone who you know, tag as many people as you can on it because we need to spread the word of why people are vaping. We're not vaping just so we can be in a nuisance and go out there and bow big clouds and we can look crazy and everything and or we're just trying to fog up a, a building. No, we're vaping because we're trying to do something that's healthier for us and that will save our that saving people's lives and something that is going to extend not it's not going to take away what you've done if you've smoked for 30 years it's, it, i mean there's no saying that you're not going to get cancer because if you start vaping vaping is not a cure for cancer 
what it is is something that will help you get off of it and it's uh two times more effective than any nrt product so it's crazy how effective vaping is but yet the u.s still does not want to say it's better for you uh Yeah, I mean, there's a bunch, like, whenever I stopped vaping for the first time, I, I was vaping zero mil milligram nicotine juice, and I was really just doing it because I was being a hard-headed person, and I was like, you know what, I'm going to vape, and I'm going to tell my company I'm using zero mil milligram, so what I started doing was use zero milligram nicotine, and I really just wanted to use the zero milligram nicotine so that way I could say, yeah, I can vape also while I'm not using any nicotine, so I don't have to pay my $50 per month or whatever. But, uh, yeah, I mean, there, there's a lot of people I know. I know someone who smoked for 30 years. They asked me, hey, man, my doctor told me I really need to stop smoking. My wife told me I need to stop smoking. I can't sleep at night. I get a lot of bad dreams and everything. And I was like, well, I don't know about the bad dreams, man. The bad dreams might not go away, but I'll help you get on to vaping. I helped him get it by a setup. He bought his first setup. He smoked or he vaped for, I don't know, I think it was uh, two, three months, and then complete everything all together. Had a brand new badass setup, man. I was like, hell yeah. I was like, let me, let me buy that from you. He's like, I already sold it. But he, he completely stopped everything. And it, it's been about two, three years. And he has still, to this day, not smoked or vaped or anything like that. I mean, it's so crazy. And uh, what's his, Nick Bissett, he doesn't even, uh, he doesn't use nicotine anymore, really. And there, there was another guy who I saw a post on. He was doing, uh, he, was a, he was a guy who did tricks and stuff like that. And what he did is he used zil, uh, three milligram and what he was going to do is he was going to go to zero. So that way he could see if it did any effects on his body or if he saw any differences. And I believe Nick, he uses three every now and then, but I, I don't think he uses it very much only whenever he gets three sent to him to try it out and stuff. But usually he's using zero. And I mean, he says he's doing fine. So, I mean, that's, that's really good. Uh, Yeah, Breeze is a really good one to help people get off of smoking. Like I said, any kind of pod system is really good to help get people off of smoking. Yeah, all the big farm products I've heard, I've never actually honestly tried them. I'm I'm only 20, I'm about to be 25. I've never actually tried any of the big pharma products like the uh, patch, the gum, the uh, Chantex or anything like that. I mean, I know people who've used the Chantex and they said it makes them go absolutely crazy. It makes them go nuts. So, I mean, I've never really wanted to. And my company actually kind of tried to uh, promote it the other day, and I got a little mad at them with that. But, yeah, I mean, it's some like like I said, it's two times percent. Uh, it's, two per, it's two times more effective than any kind of NRT product, which is crazy. Something that is, is – and they were saying it's because it's the same sensation. You get the same sensation. You inhale, you exhale, just like you are when you were smoking a tobacco, uh, traditional – tobacco combustible cigarette but yet you don't get the bad effects from it or anything which is really good yeah i mean see i mean there's so much stuff you can get uh whenever you are smoking and everything like that i mean copd uh there's a bunch of different things i've known people who've had uh early signs of copd too and then they started vaping and it's pretty much like all went away and their doctors are like, Oh, well, how'd that happen? And then like, I'm not too sure if your doctor did this or not, but I know that there's been doctors who have, uh, actually said, Oh, well you, you were vaping. And they're like, yeah. He's like, Oh, well that, that, that didn't do nothing. You, I mean, you're going to get even sicker. Something's really going to happen to you. And it's just, I mean, it's just what doctors are doing because I mean, they're not going to make any money off people who are vaping if they, because you mean you're not gonna, or you could still get sick, but you're not gonna get as sick as if you were smoking cigarettes. Yeah, I've heard that the patch does that. Um, I've, I, yeah, I've heard that the patch. Uh, my doctor is me. Yeah, uh, I mean it, it's it's not. I want to say it's crazy to see that doctors are amazed by people's progress, but there's some doctors out there who still. I, I, I think deep down in their heart that they do believe that the uh, that vaping is actually better for you, but I I don't think they want to express it. 
because then they start losing money and everything. But I mean, it's it's awesome that your doctor agrees that it helps, and he's uh, amazed by your progress, and that's that's really good. I mean, vaping is something out there that's honestly saving lives. I mean, I can't actually go out there and say vaping is – I can say vaping has saved my life because I've never got to that stage to where it's actually smoking or uh, dipping or anything like that has really affected me too much besides making my mouth hurt or anything like that. And I've never tried any of the other NRT products, but, I mean, there's so many other people out there who have gotten all these bad things and they started vaping and it's helped them out so much. I mean, vaping really does save lives. Uh, and yeah, I've, I've, honestly, I've heard that the patch has actually done that. It's it's ha it has uh, gave people weird dreams or uh, weird vibes. Like whenever they're walking around, I, I think someone said that it, like they could almost like hear stuff like when they were awake, like voices or something like that, which is really crazy. And like I said, I've never tried any NRT products, and I was thinking about maybe doing something to where I tried them just to see what the effects were. But I really don't want to do that because I've heard that the effects are absolutely crazy. Yeah, I mean, that's one thing right there. Uh, I mean, honestly, to me, vaping helps so much. Like you said, you haven't had any uh, upper respiratory infections since you stopped smoking, which is really good. I mean, it's, it's great to hear that all y'all are so much healthier by vaping and everything. It's, it's just really good to see that. I, I love I, I love the vape community, community and the vape family. Everyone over there, the Stooges and everything, the Omis, all them, man, they're they're really nice. I mean, all the vape community has helped out a lot. So, I mean, anyone who's watching this, I want to just let y'all know that I really do appreciate y'all and what y'all have done for me and how much y'all have helped me and how much y'all have uh, welcomed me and all the other people out there with uh, open arms. Y'all are really nice. Y'all help out as much as possible. I mean, if someone new came up to you and said, man, hey, I want to start vaping, you're not going to tell them, hey, man, get the hell away from me. I don't want to talk to you. You're, and you're also not going to tell them, hey, man, go out there and get one of these. You need a mech mod. No, the first thing that everyone should tell or I mean, first thing I'm going to go ahead and tell them is, hey, you need to get a pod system. Try that out. See where you, see how see how you like it. I had a guy at work who my buddy gave him a sub-ohm tank with a little single battery 18650 mod. And he was trying it out. And he said, man, you should really try this. You're going to like it. And he tried it, but he didn't really like it. And he's like, man, I really want to stop smoking. I really want to start vaping. Or I just, I want to be able to stop altogether. It doesn't matter. But I want something to work. I want something to help me. And I told him, I was like, all right, well, let me let me bring you a pod system. I brought, I brought him a, a little cheap $10 rock pod system. Gave it to him. He has loved it. He uh, still dual uses which I told him, I mean, it's going to eventually go away. You're eventually going to get to the point to where you hate the taste of uh, cigarettes and everything. But he's, uh, he, I mean, he's doing way better. He went, he used to be like a pack, a uh, pack a day or a uh, pack every two days smoker to like two cigarettes a day to two to like three, which is really good. So, I mean, I told him, I was like, dude, just keep going at it and you're eventually going to get away from it. And I'm trying to help him out with experimenting with flavors. Cause I mean, I order a bunch of juices and I let him try them. I'm like, hey, man, well, what do you think about this flavor? What do you think about that flavor? And then eventually, whenever he finds the flavor he likes, I mean, it's just going to help him take off even more and get uh, get away from the traditional cigarettes. And I've told him how much cheaper it is, too. Hell, you buy a little rock pod system. They're about $10. Say if you have to buy replacement pods, they're about $7. And then after you buy that, you go out and you buy one bottle of juice you use e-juice connect and even if you don't have a discount code it's only like ten dollars for a bottle of salt nix or uh twelve dollars i mean you can find them all day online from ten to fifteen dollars even up to twenty but you're spending thirty dollars right there that's cheaper than a carton of cigarettes for thirty dollars and it's gonna last you pretty much as long because i mean they're not super high sub ohm tanks or anything like that so it's not gonna burn your juice out that much but it's just so much easier for them to use that I mean, you could use a jewel and stuff like that, but then you're throwing away pods after you're using them. The coils are still good, but yet you, <clears throat> you can't uh, refill them, which I honestly hate. I, I don't have any kind of pod system I can't refill. I've had the jewel before, and I, I, I like the flavors. They're pretty good, but I, I hated it because you spend – almost $20 for four pods, I believe it is. It's like $17 for four pods, and I hate that. What's up, man? 
Uh, but I mean, it's it's just it's crazy how much money you're gonna spend on those pod systems or like the Ace Pod. I bought one on Black Friday for a dollar, and I've given it away. And it came with two pods. I, I, it was a starter kit with two pods and uh, the pod system for a dollar. And I gave it away f- to someone because I don't really vape 50 milligram salt nicks. The most I go up to is 24. And that's just like the vape Tasia stuff. If I want something, what I usually get, like whenever I go to a, my vapor shop, I get stuff like this. I get a 15 milligram. This is the uh, peanut butter custard I'm always talking about. It's a 15 milligram. I think it's just 30 on it. He might have messed up the label, but. It's a 15 milligram salt nick, and what I'm gonna start doing is I'm I'm gonna start going away from the salt nicks. I'm a, I'm really trying to get away from all the pod systems and everything. But first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get away from salt nicks. I'm gonna start using regular nicotine and see how I like that. And then I'm just keep losing the service. To work or bring pod system. Yeah, I mean that. I honestly, me, I bring a, I bring a lot of the systems I use. I use them daily. So like my, uh, like my Revenant, I probably might not bring everywhere with me just cause I really like the way it looks. And it's just really nice. I want to keep it clean. I want I don't want to break it or anything, but I mean, I, like I have stuff like this, a little $10 box, the, uh, D pro 133. I mean, I bring this to work with me pretty much every day with the, uh, gear on it. I mean, it's a cheap setup. The gear I bought for like $20 and then the, uh, pods or the uh d pro is like ten dollars so i mean stuff like that and then i bring pod systems with me all the time to work um i bring pretty much anything i bring my mech mods with me a lot i bring a lot of my tubes because i like to use these uh while i'm on break or anything like that i bring some of my squonkers and stuff i mean that's something that's really good especially if you work in construction or like my buddy on here he uh he works somewhere where they make metal and stuff like that. And they, it's like a really dirty job, really hard job. And there's a lot of stuff. If you drop something, it could break. So, I mean, if you were construction or anything like that, yeah, it'd be really hard to bring something that's really nice with you. Like say, if you have a, a one of the uh, Warlocks hammers, or if you have something like the uh, Ruby Ruse mods, the Aspen mod co monarchs or anything like that. If you have any of those it'd be really hard to bring one of those to a place like that because you don't want to break it and honestly i wouldn't want to break it i probably wouldn't even bring anything like that with me anything over a hundred dollars i'm not going to bring to work with me but that's just me but uh what else were you saying on here uh yes yeah so that's that's really good bob Saving three hundred seven or oh my three thousand seven hundred eighty eight dollars since I quit smoking, uh, but vaping has become a hobby, so it possibly saved possibly saved half of that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if if you want to be the vapor who is just there to do it for cheaper and for healthier, you could go out there. Like I said, buy a pod system. I mean, even if you want to get something nice and besides the rock pod, you go online. Twenty five dollars right here. For the Orion Q, you get pod system or you get the pods for them. They're ten dollars each, and then whenever you replace them, they're another ten dollars. You're spending about ten dollars a month just on pods because your system's gonna still be good. And then say you buy a new bottle each month, that's another ten dollars. If you're a pack a day smoker, that's say say even if it's just five dollars for one pack, and you buy it for seven days, so you're spending thirty five dollars right there, and you're already spending only 10 to 20 or you spend about 10 yeah about 10 to 20 dollars each month just for pods and a bottle of juice so i mean if you only go through one bottle of juice per month you're only spending 20 dollars, but you're already spending 35 dollars a week on cigarettes if you're just a one pack a day smoker i know people who, uh, thick nick he, he said he was a five pack a day smoker that's out i, I mean that's just crazy five packs a day though i mean there's and I don't even want to know that's $35 per day just on smoking cigarettes. So vaping, I mean, if, even if you don't turn it into a hobby, it could be super cheap. But I mean, even when you turn it into a hobby, you got to think about not how much money you're saving, on, but how much it's saving your life. Yeah. Bobby, he said he was a five pack a day smoker, marble red one hundreds. And, uh, what was the other one? Uh, lucky strikes. Lucky strikes, man, that's crazy. Five packs a day of Lucky Strikes unfiltered, but yeah, 
I mean, I mean, if you wanted to turn it into a hobby and everything like I did, I mean, I got mods and I've got bins of juices and everything. I got like three of these full of 60 mils, 100 mils, 120 mils. I got juices all lined up over here. I got mods lined up over here. But I mean, there's so much. I mean, even this is I don't really see it as how much money I'm spending. I see it as how much it saved my life and how much it's actually helped me get off of to tobacco and everything. Yeah, I, I, me too. I honestly, I need to stop buying juice, but I just I ordered all this. I think uh, Friday or something like that, and then, uh, I think yeah, yesterday Saturday I just ordered another. $50 worth of juice so <laughs> it's kind of hard not to buy juice because um, I always love trying new flavors like this one right here the hibiscus one the strawberry hibiscus man I've, I've been really liking it and it's it's been a really good vape on there I really want to try some weird different flavors here lately and I've also been on a I went on a big grape kick so I'm already pretty much done with all the advocacy talk and everything like that. I'm just pretty much talking about like juices and everything right now. But I've been on a big uh, grape kick there for a while, and I bought some uh, grape jam monster. I bought some uh, rotten candy, I believe it is, uh, from Strange Fruit. It's a grape soda candied flavor, and I bought some other grape flavors. I went on a big grape kick there for a little bit. Here lately, I've been on a big banana kick. I went through. This is like. I, mean, I don't know if you can see that. There's like nothing left in this. I got this in my squonker right now. The ripe uh, banana. I've uh, just bought this one, the Pan Am. It's a banana. I bought the fried banana and a couple other ones. Uh, Uncle Junk's banana. I bought a buttload of banana flavors here lately, and I've been really going on those. And I went from a custard kick to all these other ones. Paper box mix. Dang yeah, I mean I haven't done the sample box stuff yet. I might I might message you and see how see how those are going because I mean I really want to try doing stuff like that because I did a mystery box from uh, Flawless and I really liked what I got out of that. But I did their Saltnik one. I pretty much gave it to a buddy for his birthday. But I mean it's I really want to start trying a whole lot of new flavors. But then it's kind of hard when I go to order. I'm like yeah you know what I really do like these. But then again I kind of want to try something new. So usually I'll just pick up one that I really know I do like, and then I'll order like five other ones that I don't know about yet. But this is going to be concluding the re or my weekend wisdom vape blog. So I hope everyone had fun. I hope everyone liked this. Uh, comment down below if you did like the live. Um, I, I, I honestly I think I kind of like it because I can answer people's questions while they're in here. I know there wasn't too many people in here. I kind of last minute a little late and everything but uh comment down below if you did like this i might start doing my weekend wisdom vape vlogs like this and i might be a little bit more prepared uh and do it earlier in the weekend or something and i, I really want to start doing more lives with people on here i want to start doing it whenever i have uh, a guest and everything Yeah, I really do want to try it because, I mean, it is, I want to see how good of a deal it is and everything and how much juice I actually get. But like I said, this does conclude my Weekend Wisdom Vape Vlog episode number six. So I hope everyone did enjoy. Like I said, comment down below if you did like it. Uh, let me know if you didn't like it or what you think I could improve on on this. And then also let me know if you want to see more of these because I really did want to start having some live guests on this. Make sure you hit that thumbs up for me and don't forget to subscribe onto my channel if you want to see more of these or if you want to see more of my reviews i got a whole bunch of reviews coming up y'all saw the vape mail i got all of these i got some more stuff coming in and i got my warlocks hammer coming in here really soon uh but yeah bob i'll see you over there on discord here in a little bit but this is jay from texas cloud town i hope y'all enjoyed it but i am out remember guys vape on and keep it cloudy guys